Welcome to Job Ready WBL. What you're looking at here is our work based learning screen where you can see a status of where all of your students are at. Each one of these tabs at the top are completely customizable. So if you want to segment students into uh, multiple groups, you can do so. So to do that, we call these WBL types. So if you click on settings and go to WBL types, you can see some that I've already defined here. We'll use co-op cooperative education as an example. When I edit this event, you can see we can add a short description here. This will be shown to um, potential employers uh, in our self-registration page. We'll demo that a little bit later. Uh, but you have two choices, either student-based, where we're going to be tracking information about individual students, or you can choose an event. This may be something like a job fair um, or some type of event that's going to be held at the school or at another location, and you can track whether or not folks are going to RSVP to that. So um, for the uh, school-based activities, you'll see that we have three types of forms. So we have enrollment, recurring, and completion forms. And again, all of this uh, is customizable. You can upload any form. Um, we'll show you how those get built here in a moment. But you can select ones that apply for each of these categories. And if it is a recurring form, you can also set a frequency so that it will send you a little reminder. So after 30 days, if you haven't done an on-site visit, um, you'll get an alert that um, that's overdue. We can require employer clearances. Um, so you can see that we have some here listed. Um, you can click the new button to create additional if you like. Again, all 100% customizable. Um, along the same lines, you can um, have multiple documents here that you're gonna require from a student. So this could be driver's license, for instance. Um, you can get a little creative here. So maybe if you want them to have a resume that they have to upload, you could do that. Uh, and then lastly, we have a uh, required weekly hours. And again, this just gives you a little reminder if you if they're falling behind the schedule. Okay, so once those are defined, the next step in the process is getting your employer set up. So uh, we'll go over here. You can see I have a few sample employers. So if we click on new, we can enter all that information in for the employer. Uh, but I have some here just to save time. Uh, once you have the employer record created, you can have as many contacts for, for that employer as you like. Uh, all of this information, if you already have a database uh, or an Excel spreadsheet of this information, we can import this for you. Uh, but you can have, have those folks here. So you may have somebody in human resources, you may have a supervisor for the uh, student, et cetera. Um, the employer self-registration that I talked about, if you click on this button, you can enter in a short introductory message, and then you'll see that there is a link provided. Um, this is something that you can provide to your potential employers. You can list it on your website. Um, we'll put your logo here. Um, this is that introductory text. And then the employer can enter their information for their business, select an industry that might be applicable, and then um, I mentioned earlier, each of those work-based learning types, this is where that description comes into play. Um, so, you know, they, if they want to know what an internship is all about or what diversified occupations are, they can choose you know, some of these as they might be willing to participate in. And then enter in information for a contact person. And once that is submitted, that will automatically show up on your employer page. Um, also, you can define the clearances here. So those ones that I, I showed you earlier, you can make these whatever you like. And the last piece to getting all the setup done would be creating your form. So we'll go over to the form builder. And I have a few that are in here already. So let's take a look at the training plan. So if I edit that form, I give it a name the reminder interval is how many days um, that will pass before a reminder is automatically sent out. So if it's waiting on the student to sign, then three days they haven't signed yet, we're gonna send out our reminder uh, email to let them know it's their turn to sign. 
So here's where you define who all the signers are and then the order in which they sign. Once that is done, we'll go over to the builder. And this was a PDF that was uploaded. If there already are fields in the PDF, it's a fillable PDF, we'll detect those and automatically insert those for you. Um, so you can see this is just an example one that we have. And then for any of the fields, if you click on it, you can define who will fill that out. You can also set whether that's a required field or not. Most of the time you're going to want signatures to be required, so you can set that. And you see along the top here, we have other fields. So if I wanted to add a, a text uh, box here, click that, and then you just simply drag it onto the form and choose who's going to fill that out and whether it's required or not. If you want to delete it, click the trash can and we're all set. So if we hop back over to the work-based learning screen, Um, you can now enroll students in each of these activities. So if I want to add somebody to internship, I can click on new and I have my example student and we can say that they're going to work for Edgery 360. Choose who my contact person is. And again, if I don't have these set up, I can use the new button to add more. And if you know the hourly pay rate, you can set that and we'll select a start date. And then if you want any notes here, you can do so. We'll go ahead and add them. So as you can see here, we now have the student listed and we can see at a glance where they're at in the process. So for instance, the employer clearances, looks like we have one here, um, but we have a few that are expired. So those are showing as no. Um, you have the option to either simply mark that they have the clearance or don't have it. If you set the expiration date, we'll mark that. And then you can also upload documents to have those on record for this employer. Along the same lines, if I go to student documents, uh, the student has their own account. They can log in and submit these or you can upload it for them. But if I wanna view this, I can click edit and I can see the form that was uploaded or the file that was uploaded. And um, it very simple, just marks whether it's been uploaded or not. And next would be the uh, forms that we have. So if I look at enrollment forms, so these are the ones that I have defined for internships and I can see that they need to be submitted. So you as the work-based learning coordinator uh, or admin, you are in control of when these get set out. So if I click on submit, you'll see that I'll be given a confirmation. If you have more than one work-based learning coordinator, uh, you can choose that person here. And then the system already knows the student, the guardian, employer, et cetera. Um, so when I click on submit, an email is going to be sent out to the first signer. Um, and then that process will begin. And the nice thing about that is employers, guardians, it, they do not need to log into the system. They can just access their email, click on a link, fill out the form. And then as the process uh, happens, you'll see that the current signer will be updated uh, at any point during the process, you can also print out a blank copy of this form. And um, by doing so, if you have somebody that you're meeting with in person, you can download, print this, fill, have them fill this out electronically. And then once that's complete, you have the ability to upload then that document and that will be uh, marked as complete. Same process for any recurring forms that might uh, might be necessary here. I can see that within the next 30 days, I need to do an on-site visit. And then finally, any completion forms, if there's something that's going to be completed when the activity is complete, I can see it's currently in a pending status because we're waiting for the students to be done with the experience. For work logs and pay stubs, I'm actually going to log in as a student so you can see what that looks like from their perspective.
All right, so you can see here that I have some activities on my calendar. So this is what we use for work logs. Uh, I can select an experience here. So I'm actually enrolled, the student is in an internship and cooperative education. So I'll choose the internship. I'll we'll just go ahead and drag that on the calendar. That's gonna be on Thursday. And then once these activities are complete, so uh, yesterday I did some cooperative education. So I'm going to go here and mark that I did some work. Obviously we would want this to be a little more descriptive than that. And then if I go to student documents, here's where I upload that information. I can also submit my pay stubs. So I have one that's already been approved, but if I click on new, uh, I can choose what this is for. So whether it's the internship or co-op, uh, select my pay date and then upload a file and click on add. So I'm going to just leave that as is. Um, under my submissions, I can see any uh, forms and where they're at in the uh, status. So here's the training agreement. I can see that those are all pending completion. And then under careers, um, I can go to career explorations. And we use the um, data and the survey provided by ONET. And this student has already submitted their career exploration, so they're seeing um, some potential occupations that match. But if I wanted to, I could retake that. And here you can see there's a list of 60 questions with um, some uh, occupational uh, type activities. And then the student selects whether they strongly dislike or strongly like those or anywhere in between. And then finally, uh, they choose how much preparation they're willing to do outside of school. So once they graduate high school, are they willing to go on to college, et cetera. And once they click get results, they'll see a list very similar to this. So if I wanted to learn more about what cargo and freight agents do, um, I can click on this. And then for some of these, we have some videos that they could watch. Others, uh, there's just information here about sample um, job activities, knowledge and skills and abilities that they uh, may need to have to be successful at this occupation. And then some, uh, finally, some wages and uh, job outlook information. We also allow you to uh, track articulation agreements. So if you have any um, agreements with post-secondary partners, you can track those here uh, and list um, opportunities that may be present for that student. And um, the upcoming events just list anything in the schedule, just in a sequential list. Other than that, um, that's all the student needs to do. So I'll log out and go back to the school admin. So under work-based learning, I can see that now that I uh, the student submitted a work log, I can see that that is out here and, and this is, there's a number of things that have been done in the past. And then I, as the uh, work-based learning coordinator can either approve those or I can deny them. List the reason why. And um, then the student can follow up on those. Along the same lines for pay stubs, I can see the one that was already previously submitted and if I click this link, I can download that if that was an attachment. This is just a blank one, though, for the demo purposes. Um, that is the uh, job-ready work-based learning application uh, in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions or would like this more information or personalized demo, please reach out to us. Thank you.